Hi, I'm Elizabeth Eden and welcome to my oral presentation for Semester 2's Communicating in the Sciences course. Today, I'll be giving my presentation around the known relationship between ambient air pollution and congenital birth defects. The purpose of this talk is to present a case to put forward a grant proposal focusing on further testing of possible links between air pollutants and human birth defects. The audience I'll be focusing on is a steering committee of a research organisation's funding body. Due to a number of natural causes and human activity, hazardous chemicals are constantly being released into our environment. When we refer to ambient air pollution, we are referring to the number of gases that are released into the atmosphere. These are known for having a negative impact, effect, impact on human health. These pollutants include carbon monoxide, sulphur dioxide, nitrogen oxides, volatile organic compounds, ozone, heavy metals, and respirable particulate matter, which are divided into categories of 10 microns and below, or 2.5 microns and below. Air pollution has been known to have acute and chronic effects on human health, affecting a number of different systems and organs. These effects range from respiratory irritation and infection, heart disease, lung cancer, premature mortality and reduced life expectancy. But just how far do these effects carry through to the unborn babies in their developmental stage? Here is a recent excerpt from an episode of the project touching on the issue of air pollution. I'd be shocked to hear more Australians are killed every year by pollution than by car accidents. So, what's in the air that we breathe? Air pollution costs us $12 billion a year and causes more deaths annually than road accidents. That's the damning conclusion of a recent report from the Australian Medical Association, which says every breath we take contains harmful levels of pollutants. So, as I stand here today, I would like you to ponder this question in the back of your mind. If pollution is harmful to us, what is it doing to our future generation before it's even born? The Australian Medical Association has stated that particulate matter as being one of the most important pollutants, as it penetrates into the sensitive regions of the respiratory system, contributing to significant acute and chronic health problems and potentially premature mortality. The World Health Organization has admitted that there was not yet enough evidence to determine at what concentration in the atmosphere ultrafine particles become hazardous. This is a snapshot of where we see PM10 and PM2.5 settle in the human lung. Essentially, the smaller the particle, the further into the lung it can penetrate and be potentially more hazardous. A recent article shows us that ambient air pollution was seen to have strong associations with adverse pregnancy outcomes in China. Sulphur dioxide was consistently seen to have associated with congenital anomalies, especially cardiovascular effects. Firstly, allow me to explain what particle matter even is. PM10 is particulate matter measuring 10 micrometers or less in diameter while PM2.5 is particulate matter measuring 2.5 micrometres or less in diameter. In comparison to the human hair, or a grain of sand, we can see just how small those particles are, and anything smaller than 2.5 is naked completely to the human eye. Results for nitrogen dioxide were inconsistent. Further studies are needed to test the effects of fine particulate matter 2.5 ozone and carbon monoxide. A study in 2002 examined similar pollutants in the Southern Californian region. The purpose of the, this paper was to further build on what knowledge we had on the aforementioned associations. The paper states that recent studies conducted in different countries such as China, the Czech Republic, Brazil, Mexico and the United States related ambient air pollution to adverse birth outcomes, specifically low birth weight, intrauterine growth retardation, preterm birth, and fetal mortality. Previous study had also indicated that exposure to high concentrations of carbon monoxide during the last trimester of pregnancy may increase the risk of being low weight for preterm birth, and that exposure to carbon monoxide 
in, partic in particular matter 10, either shortly after conception or before birth may trigger the preterm birth. This sh study showed a link between high concentrates of carbon monoxide exposure during pregnancy and negative cardiovascular effects. This is evident where exposure occurred during a specific vulnerable window of pregnancy. Effects of other air pollutants have shown inconclusive in this study and again, this paper states that further studies are needed in this space for accurate determination of effects of nitrogen dioxide, ozone and PM2.5. In 2013, another paper was published examining carbon monoxide, nitrogen dioxide, ozone and particulate matter in the lungs on 135,527 cases of live and stillbirths in the Tel Aviv region during 2000 and 2006. The aim of this study was to investigate the association between gestational exposure to air pollution and the risk of congenital heart defects. The link here was seen between particulate matter 10 and congenital heart defects. This link was shown where there was high exposure during a specific month of pregnancy. Other pollutants were also inconclusive in this study and it also stated that further studies were needed. In 2014, a meta-analysis investigated 17 articles and considered 13 studies outcomes looking at the association between congenital anomalies and mother's exposure to air pollution during pregnancy. This analysis stressed the importance of understanding the relationship between air pollution and congenital anomalies and also the biological process through which air pollution could lead directly or indirectly to these outcomes. The only significant finding in this study was that nitrogen dioxide concentrations had a narrowing effect on large blood vessels that lead from the heart, or as we know, the aorta. Lastly, I reviewed a 2009 paper which looked at congenital birth defects between 1998 and 2004 in Brisbane, Australia. Although there was a link between nitrogen dioxide and heart valve links, heart valve defects, the study presented mixed results and was therefore difficult to conclude whether ambient air pollution in Brisbane had an adverse association with the birth defects examined. With the dramatic increase of road vehicles and infrastructure in Brisbane, I speculate that this information is outdated and a more current study would be of benefit to the Queensland population. A 2013 study confirmed there are indeed gaps in this research area and also offered suggestions of ways we can utilise our technological advances resulting in improved assessment data and to focus the study more around traffic related pollutants. The overall conclusion of this data is that the more research can be conducted where current findings are inconclusive and with process refinements, process improvements could allow us more insight to the possible effects both during and following pregnancy. This image depicts the direct link between sulfur dioxide and lower birth rate and preterm birth. It also, we can also see the link between PM10 and congenital anomalies. It's also evident there is a gap within our research to have a look at what carbon monoxide and particle particulate matter 2.5 affects the human being. What conclusions can be drawn from the research in this area to date is clear evidence associating that higher concentrations of atmospheric sulfur dioxide, carbon monoxide and particulate matter 10 may negatively impact fetal cardiovascular system producing potentially fatal results. What we are yet to determine is to what extent these factors do indeed have an effect and what could potentially be done to reverse or avoid these changes. Finally, I rephrase the question from earlier and leave you with this thought. Now that you've seen how pollution can be harmful, even fatal for some, do we as a society not have a duty of care to find out what it's doing to our future generation before they're even born? We need to start this discussion. I urge you to leave any ideas, thoughts or questions in the comment box below. Thank you.